everyone on booktube it's andrea here again i'm here with another book haul this one's slightly different if you remember a little while ago i did a book booktube on a budget book haul where i showed you 14 books that i obtained for under five pounds and in this haul i've gone one better i've got 10 books to show you that were absolutely free and this is the thing when people know you like reading and that you make videos for booktube they will start offering you books these books all came from one person in my office her name is sue she said to me the other day, Andrea, do you like reading thrillers? And I was like, yeah, I love thrillers. They're one of my favourite genres. She said, oh, I've got loads of books. I'll bring them in for you. She herself purchased them cheaply from the charity shop, which is where they will be returned to once I've read them or I'll be passing them on to somebody else to read. So you can't get better than that. Ten books for free from a friend and people will start offering you books. They'll say, you, you, you like reading, don't you? I've got some books, I'll bring them in. It's not the first time this has happened because another friend of mine named Julie, who I have swapped books with in the past, she brought me in a load a long time ago. So, enough of that rambling. On with the thrillers. This is really good timing with this bookathon coming up because I think there might be one or two in this pile. So the first one is Blood Relative by David Thomas. How well do you know the one you love? Peter Crookham arrives home late from work to a bloodbath. His journalist brother Andy is dead, covered in knife wounds, and his beautiful young wife Mariana is bathed in his blood. Convinced his wife is incapable of murder, Peter flat vows to clear her name. Yet he is forced to question his conviction when he discovers the subject of Andy's final investigation, Mariana's past. This past Peter will discover is inextricably linked to one man, an elusive, mysterious figure affiliated with the then East German security service, the Stasi. But this man is much more than that. Much more. And so is Mariana Crookham. I mean, that sounds pretty good. The second one, and I think this is one I'm going to actually use for Spookathon, and it's called Eeny Meeny, and it's by MJ Ard. Arledge. One lives and one dies, no choice. The girl emerged from the woods barely alive. Her story was on above, beyond belief. But it was true, every dreadful word of it. Days later, another desperate escapee is found and a pattern is emerging. Pairs of victims are abducted, imprisoned, and then faced with a terrible choice kill or be killed. Would you rather use your life or lose your mind? Detective Inspector Helen Grace has faced down her own demons on her rise to the top. As she leads to the investigation to hunt down this unseen monster, she learns that it may be the survivors, living calling cards, who hold the key to the case. And unless she succeeds, more innocents will die. That sounds pretty spooky. Quite scary. I like the sound of that one. I like them all, really. There's a lot, a lot of these titles have got blood in them, actually, I think. I think. Well, there seems to be a sort of theme going on. Well, they are all thrillers, I suppose. Another one is Blood Harvest by S.J. Bolton. She's been watching us for a while now. So you can see these are secondhand. They are a bit battered. But why not? They look good to read. So I can't wait. Now you see her. Julian is haunted by the disappearance of her little girl ten year, two years ago. A devastating fire burned down their home, and but she remains, remains convinced that her daughter survived. Now you don't. Ten-year-old Tom lives by a neglected churchyard. Is he the only one who sees the solitary child playing there? And what is she tell trying to tell him? Now you run. There's a new vicar in town, Harry, and he's meeting the locals. But menacing events suggest he isn't welcome. What terrible secret is this town hiding? Again, I'm thinking, that's a spookathon one. Sounds quite creepy. We have Buried Alive by J.A. or Jack Curley. Kelly, I don't know. Soon after witnessing the escape of violent psychopath, that's always a good start, isn't it? Bobby Crane from prison, Alabama detective Carson Ryder takes a rare break in the mountains, but his vacation is interrupted when an anonymous phone call summons him to the scene of a grisly murder. With more savage killings and the heavy-handed heavy FBI only inflaming the situation, Ryder and local detective Donna Cherry sift through the increasingly bizarre clues. Do you think there might be a romance there? Hmm. Is there more than one killer on the loose? And how does Carson's clinically insane brother, Jeremy, now on the run, fit into the picture? Because every cop's got to have a criminally insane brother, right? We have classic P.D. James book, The Murder Room, which is a Commander Dalgleish story. And it's about a museum. Love something like, ooh, murder 
it says it all in the title. I'm not going to read the back of all of them. We'd be here all day. It's already been five minutes and I'm only on the fifth book. And this one's got a long book. <laughs> So it basically says, when Commander Dalgalish is persuaded by an old friend to visit the Dupane, a small private museum on the edge of Hampstead Heath, he can have no idea that he will return to it in one week later under different circumstances. One of the family trustees has been horribly murdered and Dalgalish and his team are called in to investigate a death which from the first fraught, which is at first fraught with complications. Even before the museum, museum, even before the murder, the museum was in tumult. Tumult. A new lease was due to be signed and two of the trustees were determined to keep the museum open and the third passionately determined on its closure. So that sounds like an, a good one. And it's, a, a, it's P.D. James. Come on. The next one is Barbara Erskine. This is an author that's actually been recommended me to, by me to another one of my work colleagues whose name is Amy. Um, but yeah, so and this is called Time's Legacy. And this is my sort of book, Ancient Secrets Buried Deep in Glass and Breeze Pass, One Woman's Quest Finally to Set Them Free. Cambridge, present day. Following the death of her mother, Abby Rutherford receives a mysterious bequest, a misshapen crystal sphere known as the Serpent Stone, which seems to give her glimpses of concealed mysteries long covered up by the church. Western England, 25 AD. A stranger has come to chilly Somerset wetlands with a story of hope and reconciliation, but he has been followed by powerful forces determined that he will not undermine Roman's, Roman rule in Britain. Abby question what connects these ancient events and her gift, and why so many people seem desperate to hide the truth. Now this is the sort of book I love. Archaeological thrillers, yay. yay. Oh look, the ice cream van again. Anyone for 99? Okay, enough of that nonsense. Next up is the famous and fantastic Kathy Rikes with Deja Dead. So enter Dr. Tempress Brennan. I like these. Do you like Kathy Rikes? So basically the meticulously disembembered... I should have brought a drink up, you know. Dismembered body of a woman is discovered in the grounds of an abandoned monastery to decompose for a standard autopsy request anthropologic expertise. Temperance Brennan, director of forensic anthropology for the province of Quebec, who's been researching recent disappearances in the city. So, yes, I like these. I've read a few Temperance ones, Temperance Brennan ones. Not this one, so I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, Lee Child, a Jack Reacher novel. Worth dying for. I love Jack Reacher. I love Lee Child. Not so keen on Tom Cruise playing Jack Reacher because he's supposed to be like over six foot tall, but there you go. <clears throat> there's, a dead, there's deadly trouble in the wilds of Nebraska and Reacher walks right into it. He falls foul of the Duncans, a local clan that has terrified an entire county into submission. But it's the unsolved case of a missing eight-year-old girl, already decades old. Why has it gone really dark in it? in my like drama that Reacher can't let go. Reacher, bruised and battered, should have just kept on going. But for Reacher, that was impossible. What in this fearful rural country would be worth dying for? I love these books. I do really like Jack Reacher. Actually. I know I'm making it sound parody and, and making fun of it. I'm not. I'm really looking forward to it. I do love it. I do love Jack Reacher books. They're so, they're such a good read. John Grisham's next, another famous author, and this is A Time to Kill, a town where murder follows justice. Okay, so when Carly Haley guns down the hoodlums who have raped his 10 year old child, who can blame him, not that we advocate vigilantism in this booktube community, the people of Clanton see it as a crime of blood and call for his acquittal. But when extremists outside Clanton hear that a black man has killed two white men, they invade the town, determined to destroy anything and anyone that opposes their sense of justice. Jake Briggins has been hired to defend Haley. It's the kind of case that can make or break a young lawyer. But in the maelstrom of Clanton, it is also the kind of case that could get a young lawyer killed. Now I think this is very... And the final book is The, the Bone Thief by Jefferson Bass. Again, along the, the lines of uh, Kathy Reichs, the woman on the autopsy table had been dead for only two days and had been in the cooler that whole time. But if I'd been guessing from the condition of her neck, I'd have guessed that her corpse had been ripening at the body farm for a week or more. 
Forensic anthropologist Bill Brockton is exhuming a body to ex obtain a bone sample. A simple enough job until he discovers that the body's limbs have all been removed. Brockton soon finds himself working undercover for the FBI, infiltrating the brutal world of black market body parts. Faced with the toughest case of his career, Brockton is also in grave danger. If one of his shady new associates should discover they've been double-crossed, they're unusually well-placed to dispose of his body. So, wow, doesn't that sound creepy? See what I mean? There's a lot of creepiness going on around here at the moment. So, those are the ten books that my friend Sue gave me for free. Those are going to help me with reading my wrap-ups, doing my next sort of... Um, things you know like doing my wrap ups um I'm already going to be exceeding my Goodreads goal the question is by how many books this is going to help me decide what I'm going to do next year on that so oh my god this is how you do booktube cheap and when you the, and you, the thing is don't say oh yeah but you need to review new books you need to read only new books no booktube's not about that booktube's about spreading the love of books regardless of whether they were written 400 years ago or last week. You may give me a recommendation of a brand new book to read and it might be fantastic. You might give me the recommendation of a brand new book to read and I might think it's crap. I might say why don't you read this and it's like 70 years old and it might be the best thing you've ever read but you may never have heard of it. So that's the only good thing is learning about what new books to read. I have read so many new books and so many different books since I've started watching and filming booktube that oh, I'm just so amazed. It makes me just want to read more and more and more and my one regret in life is that my life is not long enough or will not be long enough to read all the books because that would be impossible because like there's billions 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 of books but I'm gonna make a damn good go of reading whatever I can if I don't like something I'm gonna DNF it if I love it I'm gonna recommend it whether it's William Shakespeare Ernest Hemingway a book on Marilyn a book on Jack the Ripper um a YA an LGBT I'm gonna if I like it I'm gonna tell you so that's what I love about booktube it's all inclusive even reading, I love reading The Famous Five, and they were like, they're kids' books. I love them. I will read anything, except for erotica. I don't like that, because I feel, ugh. Yeah, we all know people have sex. I don't need to read about it. I can go and have it if I want. I don't, I don't need to read about it. Now, come on. Um, yeah, so, books are fantastic. Books are wonderful. If you've kind of liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share, comment if you've got anything to say, and subscribe and I will see you very very soon with another book related nonsense filmed vlog. Happy reading guys! Bye bye!